Acts chapter number 24. We're just going to read two verses. We'll begin reading verse 25. The Bible says, And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for a good Sunday school hour. We thank you for the good presence of the Holy Ghost of God. God, as we come to you this morning, we are a needy people, but we are an undeserving people, Lord. Too many times we let the noise of the world drown out your still, small voice in our life. God, forgive us. And God, I pray that still, small voice of God would thunder in our hearts this morning. And I pray you have folks do business with you. And God, I pray for the saints of God. The Lord, they would desire you above all things. And God, I pray if there's any amongst us in a crowd this size this morning that knows thee not, that are strangers to the grace of God, that God, the still small voice would speak to them this morning. And I pray, God, we'd see them birthed into the family of God. Now, Father, help us. We need your help. Without you, we can do nothing. Without your touch, we are not much. And so, Father, I pray that, Lord, you would speak through me, and I pray the Word of God would go forth and accomplish that which you will. And God, we certainly do pray that I don't say anything contrary to the Word of God, but everything you'd have me to say. And God, I pray you'd speak, and God, I pray folks would respond, and I pray great revival would break out even in our midst today. Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. God, I pray you'd be glorified, and I pray the saints of God be edified, and we'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention as a way of an introduction to several things. I want you to notice, first of all, the Apostle Paul has been arrested. He has upset the Sanhedrin Council of Israel, the Sanhedrin Council that he once was a member of. He knew everything they thought, everything that they had went through, every uh, religious ritual they went. There's only a difference now. Uh, Paul is no longer Saul of Tarsus. Uh, he is the one that God saved on the road to Damascus. Uh, he went on his way to Damascus to arrest and have Christians uh, 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 arrest, imprisoned, and slaughtered. Uh, and uh, he came back uh, saved in one of them. Uh, and now he's went to uh, 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 the synagogue, and he, went, and he wanted to listen and tell them the truth uh, about the Lord Je Jesus Christ. Uh, and we find that the Sanhedrin didn't like it. Can I say this? Those in error never like the truth to, to be exposed. Why do you think the media is silencing truth today? Why do you think tr uh, preachers are under so much pressure today? because mm, the truth will set you free mm. uh, so we find that the great apostle Paul has been arrested he's been arrested for telling the truth and here he is brought before Felix the charges have been set before Felix as to all the errors of Paul uh, causing an insurrection among the Jews uh, and Paul defends himself now, by the time we get down to verse 24, we find that Felix is going to summons Paul again. Now, notice a few things. Notice, first of all, the curiosity. Look in verse 24. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now, he's heard Paul's defense. Now, he brings his wife, who's a Jew... And he's curious about why Paul is preaching Christ. Hmm? Can I say it's a blessing when folks are curious about Christ? Hmm? Mm, the Bible says, Seek and ye shall find. When folks have a curiosity about the things of God, they better watch out, they just might run into him. 
We see the curiosity. Notice, if you will, the communicating of the Word of God. And it said, and as he, the Apostle Paul, verse 25, reasoned, uh, he communicated, uh, what he communicate about? Uh, of righteousness, temperance, uh, and judgment to come. Uh, uh, he began to preach to him, uh, began to tell him about the hope that he had, uh, began to tell him his righteousness was not in his ritual as a Jew, but he'd been robed in the righteousness of Christ, uh, and that uh, 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 his temperance was of such uh, uh, because of what Christ had done in his life. Uh, and he was telling Felix, now Felix, you better pay attention, because uh, judgment is coming. Uh, you stand in judgment of me, uh, but one day you'll stand in judgment before Christ. Uh, we see he communicates the Word of God. Notice, if you will, the conviction that sets in. Look at verse 25. Uh, he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Felix trembled. Hmm? You see, when somebody's curious about Christ, and Christ is presented, the sweet Holy Spirit of God begins to deal with that person's heart when they realize they're not right with God, Mm, something takes place in their life. Felix trembled. Brother James, I've known folks that couldn't sleep at night, worried about dying and going to hell. Uh, Brother Ron, I've seen folks stand in church uh, 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 in the invitation and grab the pew so tight their knuckles turn white. Uh, I've seen folks almost go into a convulsive fit uh, 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 under the weight of the fact they're not right with God. Uh, conviction set in. Can I say this, that Paul's message was decisive. Paul's message was demanding. And it was disturbing. Can I say sinners ought to be welcome in church? They ought to be made to feel welcome. They ought to be made to feel appreciated for coming. They ought to be also be able to feel love from God's people. But sinners should never get comfortable in the house of God. Uh, they ought to be disturbed when they hear the Word of God. Uh, uh, I want you to notice, lastly, as far as introduction, uh, Felix's response, his response is one of convenience. Look again in verse 25. Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. And can I say history records no convenient season ever came from Felix. Uh, one wise man said, don't put off for what you need to do today for tomorrow, for tomorrow may never come. Mm. He wanted a time of convenience. Here's what happened though. Felix heard. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He heard. But then he hesitated. He put it off. And then what happened, and it happened so many times, when people do not respond to God's word, he became hardened. As time goes on, conviction wears off, and your heart becomes a little more hardened every time you have an opportunity to get right with God. I want to preach with God's help this morning on this thought. A more convenient season. Now listen, there are Christians that know that the judgment seat of Christ is just ahead. We know the next prophetical event is that the Lord's coming for His church. Uh, we're going to stand before God. We know that the trumpet could sound today, uh, and today we could be out of here. But yet we choose to live our life our way instead of the way God wants us to live. We tell God in a more convenient season. When it's more convenient to live for God, I'll live for God. When it's more convenient to study the Bible, I'll study the Bible. When it's more convenient to pray, I'll pray. When it's more convenient for revival, I'll have revival. When it's more convenient, then we'll get around to it. And just like Felix, that day may never come for you, friend. But unfortunately, there are people who are strangers to the grace of God. Brother Bob, they're not saved. 
and they'll hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. They don't have to die and go to hell. Jesus paid their sin debt. Jesus took their death, their, their hell, their sin. He took everything, uh, and he's willing to pay for their sin. He's willing to cl cleanse them and forgive them, uh, make them a new creature in Christ, uh, make them uh, uh, adopted into the family of God, uh, a joint heir to his throne, uh, uh, give them all their hopes, desire, and glory in eternity. They'll say, you know what? Let me live a little longer and I'll get that taken care of. I'll wait till my deathbed and get right with God. More convenient season. And I say, regardless of what your convenient season encompasses, it's just an excuse. Hmm? And I say, it's an excuse that speaks of several things. First of all, it speaks of an authority issue. The reason people don't get right with God, Brother Tommy, is they got an authority issue. they got a submission issue. Some people, Brother Mike, won't get right with God because they refuse to submit to God. I'll be the Lord of my own life. I'll make the decisions for my own life. I'll do what pleases me, and God will just have to be pleased with that. Uh, and when I'm ready, then I'll put my faith in Him. They have an authority issue. You, can I say there's, there's a great problem in our country when folks have an authority issue. School teachers are no longer allowed to discipline children because too many parents have gotten on too many school boards' nerves over teachers being unfair to their little darling. And their little darling never does anything wrong. Uh, and their little darling grows up and never will submit to anybody's authority because they've never been corrected. They haven't been corrected in the home, haven't been corrected at school, uh, haven't been corrected anywhere in life. Uh, and therefore, when a police officer pulls them over, they don't respect him either. Now, kids, let me help you something. Y'all sit up and pay attention now. This will work for you. It especially worked for you all because I know where you go to school. <laughs> Here you go. This is what my parents taught me. If you get a whipping at school, back in my days they whipped you at school, and they used a board, and some of them had holes drilled in them. So they didn't have any backflow, man. They could get all the force they could. You got some of them, didn't you? Bend over, grab your ankles, huh? Quite yeah, yeah, quite a few, huh? Yeah, I can tell you, you look like you were well calloused. <laughs> My parents said if I ever got a whipping at school, that was nothing compared to what I'd get at home. Hmm? So kids, let me help you something. If you get in trouble at school, that'll be nothing compared to what happens at home. Now let me help you something, parents. Quit enabling your children. They're not darlings. They're little heathens. Trust me, I watch them run around here and destroy stuff around here. Huh? They're not... I know they're your darling. But your darling's got a little devil in them. And the Bible says if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. That's what the Bible says. But see, you're, you're teaching your children they don't have to respect anybody. Hmm? They won't respect the police officer, don't respect the teacher, won't respect their boss on the job, uh, won't respect the pastor, uh, won't respect their Sunday school teachers, uh, won't respect anybody because you've enabled them. And they grow up with an authority issue. You know what happens? When God tries to deal with them, they won't respect Him either. It's happening all across our country. I want to tell you what would have happened when I was coming up if a group got together and was decided they was going to burn a city down. Uh, uh, them old head-busting police officers would have showed up from the state police and that had been the end of it. There's a reason people didn't do that a generation ago or three generations ago when I came up. Because they knew there were consequences for their actions. The problem with folks not getting right with God, they don't realize there are consequences for their actions. 
God's angry with the wicked every day. And those that die and go to hell will pay for their own sins for all of eternity. And God will not let them out of hell. And I say those that are one, that claim they're looking for a convenient season, they might have an authority issue. Can I say, Brother Tommy, they may have an arrogance issue. Might be full of pride. God hates the proud. Give the grace to the humble. Hmm? the essence of sin the doctrine of Satan is my right to my claim to myself have a pride issue I'm not going to let some preacher tell me how to live and what to do well, listen I'd, ra I'd rather have a preacher tell me what was right than me live in my own way and die and go to hell now, I've got news for you not every preacher's right but the Bible's always right Hmm? Jesus said it'd be better to enter into heaven with one foot than to have two and enter into, ha into hell with both feet. Are you listening? Yeah. Listen. So many people have an authority issue and an arrogance issue. Hmm? I've seen children at restaurants smack their parents in their face because the parents tells them to eat what's on their plate. Now, my three children here, ask them what would have happened at the foster household or in a restaurant if that would have ever happen. Hmm? Yeah. They wouldn't be here today, and I'd be in jail. What would have happened? I guarantee you. No. From the time ours were little on, we, Matt and I had a rule. If our children couldn't go, then we wouldn't go. But we taught our children how to act. I don't know how many times ours were in high chairs and people in restaurants come by and say, your children are the most well-behaved. I'll never forget one time we had a friend who worked at Delta back when Delta was real big. And we were going on a trip. I forget where we was going. And she said, I'll bump you up to first class. Great. I got two in diapers in Jordan. And we're in first class. Hmm? I barely could afford coach, but I'm in first class. You know what I'm saying? And this lady gets on the plane. I'll never forget this. She got on the plane. She had a fur on. And she sat right behind us. And when she got on the plane, she looked and seen them three kids. She went, ugh. Annette prayed the whole flight that those kids didn't act up. We, got, we go to get off the plane, and that lady stopped and told Annette. She says, your children were such a delight and the most well-behaved. You say, why was that? What's the secret? You let them know what no means. Hmm? You train them. Hmm? Train them how to act. Don't leave them up to TV and video games to teach them how to act. Are you listening? Talk to them. Read to them. Huh? Hug them. Love on them. Spend some time with them. But some of you mamas ain't going to like this. Learn when it's time to cut the cord. No? Some of you got 18 year olds you're still trying to breastfeed. It's true. You got authority issues and arrogance issues. These kids think they can do no wrong. Hmm? I, I did get in trouble over this. I don't know why I'm on all this junk, but I'm on it. Is at, a, at a grocery store this time this kid is acting up mama told him couldn't have a candy bar or something I mean acting up I mean ugly acting up getting on my nerves acting up and I'm behind them you know what I'm saying uh, I'm telling you I, I needed Valium that day I was about ready to go berserk <laughs> and I looked at that lady and I said do you want to borrow my belt you thought I cussed her out <laughs> yeah I'm thinking well that's why you got that little heathen right there huh See, what happens if you don't train them? I'm not talking about abusing your children. I'm not talking about beating the devil out of you. I'm not, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about training your children. They'll grow up and they'll have an arrogance about them. They think they know more than a the teacher. They think they know more than a police officer. They think, explain this to me, Miss Noreen. You're, you're a bright lady. How come every person that gets shot by a police officer 
the police officer was so heinous and that little boy was so wonderful or that little girl was so wonderful and they got 29 warrants out for the rest they've been in jail 1700 times but they was the model citizen explain that to me you know what I have been dealing with the public for almost 50 years I know I'm old but can I say this you always look for patterns the only one that can break a pattern in somebody's life is Jesus Christ he makes new creatures out of people. Left to our own conceits, my dear friends, uh, we'll choose the wrong path every time. Uh, and my dear friends, if you let your child uh, uh, choose which path he wants to go, it's going to cause you a lot of sleepless and heartache full nights. Mm. Mm. People want a more convenient season. Most of the time they got an arrogance issue or they got an authority issue. Some of them have an acceptance issue. They really don't believe God can save them. They believe they went so far and they've done so much that God couldn't love them. And even though God's given every measure, a man a measure of faith, they really don't know how to exercise that faith. They really don't think God can save them. How many of you was that way before God saved you? Huh? Look, at there was people in here who didn't think God could save them. Hmm? They have an acceptance issue. Here's the key. God accepts you through Christ. He don't accept you on your merit. He accepts you on Christ's merit. Christ paid your sin debt, and God said, that's good enough. It's not about you and me and our goodness, because all of our righteousness is filthy rags, uh, but it's all about Him and His goodness. Uh, and what a blessing to realize you're accepted in the Beloved uh, when you get saved by the good grace of God. Uh, there's some that want a more convenient season because... They have activities in their way. It's an activities in their way issue. I don't know how many people I've invited to church or talked to about church. So, well, preacher, I, I, I'll, I'll come, but I got this going on, I got that going on, I got this going on, I got that going on. Got this. And the Bible says, What profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Uh, I wonder if, if they never get saved and they die and go to hell, how important them activities really were. Little Johnny, uh, you know, has got it made. Mama won't, won't let him miss, miss playing ball, but has no problem letting him miss church. Hmm. Hmm. You know why Johnny misses a lot of church a lot of times? Because Johnny watches Mama and Daddy miss church a lot of times. Again, we're talking about patterns. Listen, I know we live in a day and age where society never sleeps. We're 24 hours a day wide open. I'm still amazed you can have 250 channels on the TV and still at 2 o'clock in the morning there's nothing on. People don't sleep. We're on the go. Run, run, run. Nobody's got enough hours in the day. I'm guilty. Hmm? Uh, and don't pray for me to have patience. I, I don't like patience. I want to go, go, go. Are you listening? It was killing me sitting at home for those 10 days I was at home. You know, wasn't allowed to drive, wasn't allowed to do nothing. Sit there, it was driving me nuts. My dog kept looking at me funny. What are you doing here? You're interrupting my nap time. Get out. You know? But what has happened is we've gotten so accustomed to being so busy, we've allowed activities to replace God. I guarantee you, in a beautiful day like today, the golf course was filled up this morning. Fishing lakes were filled up this morning. Hmm? Amazes me how much time we have to do all those things we enjoy, but we don't have time for God. There's coming a day you wish you'd had time for God. There's coming a day you wish you'd had your kids in the house of God. Well, when it's more convenient, preacher, we'll be there. No, you won't. Just like Felix, that convenient season will never come. See, it's, it's a choice. If you're really serious, you'd choose to do it from right now. I thought about this. There are some that are seeking a, com a convenient season because they have an abusive issue. 
they love their sin too much to give it up. So there's only two, way, two reasons why somebody won't get saved. The first reason is they don't fully comprehend the plan of salvation. It's never been explained to them, never been presented to them. They never realized they was a sinner. They didn't realize Jesus paid for their sins. They didn't realize that Jesus said, uh, uh, Come, uh, whosoever called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They didn't know they could be saved from their sin. They don't understand it. But then far too many times, Brother Jim, the only other reason why somebody won't get saved as they love sinning more, the thought, the, more than the thought of being forgiven for their sin. They love their drinking and carousing and partying, or they love whatever they're caught up in, and it becomes abusive. Because the problem is, whatever thrills you today won't thrill you tomorrow. Why do you think they keep building faster and taller roller coasters? Hmm? You know? I rode the son of beast. That was enough for me. I ain't been on one since. Well, they had to tear that one down. Probably because of what it did to me. That was a very traumatic thing. There's something about getting off a roller coaster in your head still doing this for hours. I said, I had enough of that junk. Hmm? Listen, why? they're called thrill rides. Why do you think they keep coming up with harsher and more addicting drugs? Why do you think they keep lacing it with stuff? Because what got you high last week won't get you high this week. You done got accustomed to it. You keep abusing yourself with those habits. You just won't turn loose of them. Say, so, well, I'd have to give this up to get saved. No, you won't. Just get saved. Because what I've found is you'll never give him up, but if he gets saved, he breaks the chains. Hmm? You see, when I got saved, I, I really, there were some things I really liked. Then I got saved. Wasn't that I didn't like them anymore, I found more likes. Things I like a little better. Things I used to not like that I really like now. I didn't like being drugged to church three and four times a week. I didn't like it until I got saved. And there were some hymns I didn't like. They were slow and long until I got saved. I didn't like preaching until I got saved. Are you listening? But there are a lot of things I used to really like that I really didn't like as much anymore. Why? Because I got saved. You know what to help you? You get saved. And then the Lord moves in. And a lot of that sinning moves out. And he changes you from the inside out. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Your sinning problem uh, is really uh, all settled when you get saved, my dear friends. He just changes you. Changes you want to. Let me have you something. I do all the drugs I want to do. I just don't want to do any. I do all the booze I want to do. I just don't do any. I do all the crowds and around I want to do. I just don't do any. Why? Because he changed my wants. And he's no respecter of person. He did that for me. He'd do that for anybody. See, I don't understand this. And this is, a, this is a problem with our society. Brother Mike, I don't, I don't know where it all stemmed from. Maybe it was parents didn't build enough esteem in their children didn't tell them they loved them enough didn't hug them enough I don't know where it all started but there are people who grow up and they feel like they're unlovable and they feel like nobody will love them and care for them and then they'll get into a relationship with somebody who just abuses them and tells them nobody else is going to love you so you've got to put up with this now, I, don't understand, I don't understand a woman lets a man beat on her I don't understand that. God help the man who would ever beat on my daughter. Because he's got a foster problem then. Hmm. But I don't understand a woman who thinks she has to take that. I don't understand men who think they have to take a ver verbal abuse from a woman because they don't think they can get anything any better. Now listen, I'm not an advocate for divorce. But listen, you don't have to take somebody putting their hands on you all the time. That's not of God. It's not of the Bible. 
And it's really not of human kindness. But there are people that will get in that situation, Brother Brian, and they think nobody else will love them, so they just keep staying in that situation and keep staying until it becomes fatal. Your sin's the same way, friend. It abuses you. And if you don't get saved, it becomes fatal, for the wages of sin is death. I got good news for you. You are loved. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting love. For God is love. God loves you, friend. He's loved you with an everlasting love. He loves you in spite of your faults, in spite of your failures. He loves you. And He sent His Son to die for you to prove that He loved you. And friend, He won't abuse you. He'll redeem you and set you free from all of that. Some look for a more convenient season because they have an abusive issue. And then I thought about this. Just like Felix. He said, I'll send for you at a more convenient time. There's some, they have an appointment issue. You think you have plenty of time. Friend, we all have a deadline assigned to us. We don't know how long we'll be on the face of the earth, but I can tell you this, you go, to, you go to a graveyard, you'll find people of every age there. You may be healthy today, but tomorrow may be a whole different thing. Especially with this virus thing going around, that ought to wake some people up. But I've got news for you, there's always something that can take you out of here. We think we've got plenty of time. Well, let me tell you what the Bible says. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 2 says, And as is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. You have an appointment with death, friend. Genesis 6, 3 says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. Even if you live to be 150 years old, you don't have the promise God will ever deal with you about your sin anymore. Hmm? Can I say this? James said our life is like a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 says this. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee or drawn thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Friend, you don't have the hope of tomorrow, but you do have right now. And your appointment issue can be solved. Nothing gets on me any any more. Well, there it probably is. But one thing gets on my last nerve is you make an appointment. Make an appointment, go see a doctor. And you go see a doctor and you sit there for 45 minutes before you get to go in and see the doctor. Because the doctor thinks his time's more valuable than my time. Hmm? I have a real problem with that. I got a real problem with a lot of things. You'll probably figure that out. I could keep a psychiatrist busy for a long time. But I got good news for you. There's no waiting with Jesus. If you're willing to come to Him, He's willing to meet with you. Huh? Bible says, draw nigh to God, He'll draw nigh to you. Bible says, seek and ye shall find. I don't know about a convenient season, but I do know that it is open season today. That today is the accepted time. Friend, if you're a stranger to the grace of God, you can be saved from your sin today. If you're here today and you're saved and you've been putting things off, why are you putting things off, friend? Get it made right today. And then live in the victory that God has in store for you. He come to give us life and life more abundantly. The reason you live such a, a dismal Christian life is you don't put God first. Why don't you change that today? Just get it taken care of today. But sinner friend, Felix never trusted in Christ. And today, he's in hell. And every moment of every day in hell, he thinks, well, I wish I'd give Jesus my heart when Paul was preaching to me. Friend, if you die and go to hell, you'll remember my face. That's enough alone not to want to go to hell. 
She'll remember my face and you'll remember me preaching you, to you, telling you, you don't have to die and go to hell. Yeah. Friend, you can get saved from your sin today. See, what will all these people think? These people will be excited for you. Amen. See, we once stood where you stand. Right. Hmm. We once listened to the same lies of the devil you're listening to. But happy day when we gave Jesus our heart and life. Amen. And this crowd around here, they'll be excited for you. They'll be happy for you. You, you may not know this now, but some of the greatest friends you'll ever have in life may be sitting in this building today. So how do you know that? Because I've, I've met these people and I've, I've developed those relationships with these people. These people care about you. That's why the doors of this church are still open. They want to see you experience what they've experienced. And that is a life that means something because it's a life that's been changed by Jesus Christ. And he'll change your life because he loves you. All he asks you to do is to love him back. So today, would you love the one that's altogether lovely? The Lord Jesus Christ. There's nobody like him. There's no more convenient time than right now. So right now, will you do business with Jesus? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, if you'll come get a song of invitation. We're going to give you an opportunity to come to Jesus. We're going to invite you to come. Folks are coming and praying. Friend, if you're tired of your life and you want your life to change, you come. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. Dear Christian friend, are you tired of not having any joy, any peace, any victory? Why don't you come? Get that thing settled today. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your good grace that we ask you to speak to hearts. Lord, I pray that one that's not saved, you'd cause them to tremble as Felix did. But Lord, not to turn from you, but to turn to you and give their heart and life to you. God, I pray for that dear Christian that, Lord, is living beneath their privileges. God, I pray they'd come, get things made right with God. Lord, have your way and we'll bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen.